I think any boat you build, if you build your tanks out of fiberglass, you're going to remember that job most of all. The tanks are progressing, but it's not easy. I research the tank coating and I start the quarter berths. Good morning. It's Monday morning and I'm a week into the three weeks I've allowed for the interior. I think it's going okay. Um, what I've done this morning was wash out these tanks for the bit of glassing I did at the end and the resining along these cleats here. And in the meantime, while it's drying out, I've got two sheets of 12 millimeter foam left and I'm going to start cutting out these tops. Why didn't I cut the foam this way before? This instead of a jigsaw. Yeah, and yes, this one is supposed to be a bit of an angle. So that um, while I'm waiting for glassing in here to go off, um, I can also be glassing the, um, the tops. I had a think about it over the weekend, and if I wanted to do a really expedient job, um, I'd do a little bit more glassing in here but I wouldn't turn them into water tanks, so I'd just make them storage tanks, um, reserve buoyancy tanks. Uh, in the weekend, I um, looked at all the windows I need for here. There'll probably be um, six millimeter polycarbonate in these side windows, 4.5 for the cabin side windows. Yep, I sent away for a quote for getting those cut, and I heard back from them this morning, and um, I'll have to modify it a bit. To suit what they can and can't do with their laser cutter, they can't cut uh, polycarbonate with their laser cutter for some reason. So let's get on with it. Foam fitted before taking out and glassing and putting the access port on them. I've just filled these holes with glue fibre thickened epoxy and um, drilling these holes was really weird. You'd get about halfway down with an ordinary drill and it would stop and you had to push really hard because um, it sort of melts the um, PET as you're going down. A hole saw might have been better, a mini small hole saw, and sort of really blocks the passage of the drill. The glassing inside the tank the second tank went kind of well yesterday. Um, it was as hard as I expected it to be because I'm glassing down, around, along the bottom and up. And putting peel ply on top as well. Um, I had made it easier because I had glassed the ends first. So 
It would have been so much harder if I tried to do this all with one piece of cloth. So that was a smart move. Now, I don't know if any of you have um, finished off the inside of water tanks lately, but um, there's quite a lot of knowledge to get up skilled on, on what product to use. Um, I thought I could just go and grab something off the shelf, but um, both Adrian and I are sort of quite, quite concerned that there's no leaching at all of anything into the water. And um, there are ways around that, of course, to help with that situation by using a carbon filter. Um, but I want to be able to put water in here, take it out and use it. <clears throat> so there is a local product made in New Zealand and um, I talked to the guy in the laboratory and he said, uh, yeah, that's our kind of our best product. Um, otherwise, you have to buy 10 litres, I think it is, which um, is way more than I need. For one of their alternative products, but the product he recommended, um, he said, well, there's still some solvents in it, and um, you'll need to sort of um, wash it down after you've put it in, use the the product, the paint. And I'm not happy with that because I know that solvents get released over years, really. They don't 100%, I think, go initially. Um, that would require porosity, I suppose, in the finish. Um, so I've done some research and I had a look at casting resins. I don't know how I got there, but I thought I'll check out casting resins. And I noticed that they're FDA approved, which is a good thing because... Um, it's been through some rigorous tests by the sounds of it and it makes sense to me because it's a pretty pure resin there's no solvents in it there's no VOCs in it um, it's all about getting the ratios absolutely right of course so there's no unbound molecules well as few as possible and I have read online that even West system was asked about can you use the epoxy resins in water tanks and they were reluctant to give an answer on that and um, made it quite clear that it's the harder where the toxicity is and the only suggestion they gave was well if you really have to use it or want to use it use a little bit more resin in the ratio than you would normally use so that you're making sure that all the hardener molecules are bound up well, yeah, I'm not that happy with that, so I'm not going to chance that. So I think I found a solution. I'm going to use casting resin, and I'm going to use carbosyl, so when I paint it in, or brush or roller it, it's not going to run, um, because it will, because it's a slow going off resin. It's supposed to self-level, so it's low viscosity. It runs easily. And I saw online that a way to um, get around that is to put carbosyl in it. So it's turning it more into paint. And then, of course, you can add, add as much carbosyl as is um, suitable to make it not run so easily. Um, and the other good thing about getting that resin is I'm gluing these tops on. And I was thinking, well, what glue do you use? Because there, again, there's a potential for... A, water to be in contact with the glue no matter how small it is, you can get sort of um, some unbound molecules getting into the water don't want that so I'm thinking if I use that same resin and the carbosyl which can be used as a glue um, thickener um, problem solved the other thing with the tanks I've decided is pretty much and I can always change it later, although it would be with some difficulty. And that is to, just as you saw in, the, in a previous video, just to put the ports in the top of the tank. <clears throat> that way I can put things in there, use the space for storage. Well, it's not a very big port, but you can put cans and things in here. And also, um, you can put water in there for two reasons, as ballast, or you can fill them up and use them as um, freshwater tanks and have a portable pump maybe where you 
pull the water out and put them into 20 litre containers. I think most of the time that won't be necessary, which is the main thing. What are you going to use it for most of the time? So, water tanks as well. Portable pump, you can even put a carbon filter on if it's an electric pump, and I've got one off a previous boat in my cupboard. And put it through a carbon filter into your 20 litre container or into a bucket if you want to have a bit of a, a bucket wash out, outside. So I think we've covered all possibilities without getting too complicated and putting in drain lines, vent lines, etc. And we can get this job finished. With polonia as well, you've got to be so careful to make sure there's no lumps on the surface that you're working on. On And I usually check, but sometimes you slip up. So this is on the bottom side, fortunately, and a little bit of filler wiped over that. We'll soon sort that out. Because sanding doesn't work so well, I'm still deploying the same method for taking off these high spots. It was so cold last night that this resin hasn't cracked off as much as you'd like. So I'm going to put it out in the sun for a while. Before I build the quarter berths, I've got to do some glassing down behind there, which will be very hard to do if, if the quarter berths are built. It's all very tight. I did the sanding yesterday afternoon, and um, it's going to be tricky to get in there. So I'm going to use Dominic Tars, Dominic Sailing, Dominic Tar Sailing, great channel. Um, I'm going to use his method and wet out the glass and the peel ply together. <laughs> it could be a bit messy, but take it in there, plaster it on like a bandage and um, finish it off and as a way of doing this job, otherwise it could get, well it's going to be tricky whichever way I do it. Let's see how it goes. But the good thing is the peel ply will stabilise the cloth because this double bias moves around all over the place because the weave's going across. So you can stretch it, you can compress it very, very easily. So the peel fly, I have a feeling it's going to be very beneficial to this. It's not a highly critical bit on glassing. Now I'm going to go and wet the corner on the boat that I'm going to be putting this on. It's ridiculous how well this is working. Thanks once again, Dominic. This is my third piece going in in a very short period of time. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please subscribe if you haven't already. I've got 888 subscribers and if I get to a thousand, um, that helps me with my boat a little bit. I get a little bit of income from YouTube. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Are you going to interview me? Or yes. We, oh, I found you, Carl. Where are you? What are you <laughs> tucked under the quarter berth here? Yep, this is one of the jobs <laughs> I've done today. Um, glassing this corner here and that one there. And uh, it went really well. Look. Well, it's amazing the amount of light that's coming in through the... Um, through the foam actually there'll be a bit less when it gets painted but um, it's quite a bonus really <laughs> and uh, this is what I've done today glassing these corners as well as glassing under the saloon bunk seats which is part of the water tanks so yeah that's what I've been doing mm, nice place to hide out well, it's gonna, I'm going to spend a lot of time in one of these quarter berths, so okay. yeah, I've, when I look around I want to be able to see that I've done the job well enough. <laughs>